You're watching GW Smoke Break TV. We're here at Sticker Farmer Mendo, you know what I'm saying? Good looking out, Sticker Farmer. Yeah. Good looking out, Mendocino Family Farm. And thank you, Third Gen Family, you know what I'm saying, for sponsoring this event and for making time for me, Brandon, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no problem, brother, no problem. Uh, I appreciate your time, too. Yo, man, can we please get a quick introduction as to who you are? Uh, my name is Third Gen, or <laughs> my name is Brandon Parker. Um, Third Gen Family Farm is one of the brands that we put out there. Uh, I'm a father, husband, uh, just a normal dude in the cannabis scene. We breed genetics, make hash, and grow all of our own products. We distribute and retail all of our own products. We're what you call a single source vertical operation here in the state of California. So and I'm gonna keep it real with you right now, Brandon. You know what I'm saying? Like you're you're a character in the industry. You know, you have your own personality, <laughs> you're fearless, you know what I'm saying? You don't really care what people have to say about you. And I'll admit, like even I had a I've had emotional reactions to like to you do, being you, you know what I'm saying, doing your thing. And so what makes me feel good is that I walked up to you, you know what I'm saying, today, and I saw you and I was like, hey, bro, you know, uh, I, I apologize to you for the remark that I made on social media, you know, based yeah. on that emotional reaction, you know? Like real men, and, you know, and I responded the same thing, like, no problem, brother, you know what I mean? Yeah, I accept man. and no big deal, you know, it's like, because I'm emotional too, and I take what, you know, you put out there and very, very seriously too, you know, so it's, you know, everybody's got feelings and, Everybody has uh, things going on in life all the time, and nobody quite knows where everybody's at at any point in their life. And a lot of people got to take time to think about that too. Is you know, what is what is a person going through at a certain point in their life? What's going on? You know what I mean? And sometimes I say shit too that I come back and I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I shouldn't have said that. You know, I really didn't mean that. You but know? at the same time, I think it takes that level of fearlessness or even being brash. Uh, that fearlessness of being yourself and not caring what others think to really achieve your dream and achieve your goals. I think third gen, regardless, has got a reputation behind it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I. So at the end of the day, it seems that you're an intelligent operator. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying, man. I'm trying. You know, uh, we've all been through a lot. You know, this industry has kind of come... Uh, uh, full circle, I want to say, like I'm seeing a lot of redundancies of things and situations we've already seen, you know, and so, you know, history repeats itself type of thing, and um, I don't know if it's being smart or kind of just remembering kind of what already happened before, what I've seen other successful people do in life also, you know, like. Like what do you think sets you apart, you know? My work ethic, you know what I mean? I work harder than I want to say anybody that I know. You know, or uh, there's some people out there that I look up to too in their work ethic. They say that about you know, hogwash farms up in Sohan. Hogwash, yes. Yeah. yeah. People that grind and they put it in, like they're constantly out on the road, they're on the farm, they're calling people, they're having visionary things going on where you're trying to help other people and in tune help yourself too. You know, like you're surviving, we're working to survive and we put food on the table, but then how can I help other people? How can I constantly, I'm trying to bring my friends with me forward, I feel. I feel like I'm constantly like helping someone achieve great things too, you know what I mean? Because it's lonely if you're the only one ever doing it, and if you're not constantly trying to go, hey man, I think you should do this, or uh, you should be a part of us with this group, or you know, uh, I'm doing this, try it, you know what I mean? And what are you doing? How can I pick up some game from you? That's what this connection session that we're here at is. This is a connection. This is the whale nection, you know, the, 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 the whale show, you know, we're all here. We're big dogs in our own rights, you know, and to get everybody to uh, come together and just kind of break down and be humble and be like, yo, you know, what can I learn from this dude? You know, I'm gonna listen, you know what I mean? That's kind of, you know. Uh, you're second generation? Third generation cannabis farmer, fourth generation Mendocino County resident. So my family's been up here for a long time and we've been growing weed for a long time. Did your family have humble beginnings? Yeah, man, we came up here and we built the house in uh, Pine Mountain in 1968. Uh, my fucking, my great grandparents. Oh yeah, Thank sorry, you. No, 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 I'm no, over worries. your microphone. In dang, it. by the way, yeah. Zerber? Yeah, the Zerber. Zerber. Yeah, Zerber. Zerber. Yeah. Dang, dude. So we did, uh, they, they built the house in 68, and I actually have photos and stuff. I usually take them to all the shows and show 
people, my family, like and where I was at. And we camped when we first came to the land. We had goats and stuff. And my great grandparents, they camped. They had the recliner out in the dirt and the tent. And they had an outhouse. And Were they hippies? Uh, no. Um, no, no. Just, you know, coming up here because it was just, you know, that time. You know, folks were coming out of the cities and coming to the rural landscape. And my other family was loggers from Laytonville, the Everett's. And so they'd come over on the weekend and help build the house. And so, you know, every weekend it was like a family get together. And so I have pictures of my mom milking the goats with, you know, great grandma and, you know. So they just came for like a better life. It wasn't for the weed. No, it wasn't from the weed, you know. Well, did it didn't come up for the weed. No, no, it didn't really come up from the weed. Great grandparents didn't, you know, that's four generations deep, you know. My grandparents, their kids, and, and my parents, my mom, you know, came up from Can you talk the about the third gen, how that started, the root of this? So, um, like I said, family's been up here since 68, the grandparents and my parents grew, you know. Um, it started out real small and it just kind of grew bigger. We kind of brought third gen family onto the scene and my gen, I brought it on. Um, in 2012, we branded ourselves and won the Emerald Cup. And uh, since then, we've been branded third gen family and we won the Emerald Cup every year leading after 2012 when we first won, we got a third place. And the next year we got first and second, and then the next year we got um, first through eight, and then the next year we got first through tenth place. Who are you and paying so, off, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it got to the point where we won, you know, raws and hash and flower categories, and we got best breeder award two years in a row, best breeder, and placing top twenty, you know, five years in a row or six years in a row. It's insane, you know what I mean? So is it a family affair now, or is it you? It's me and my pops, and uh, I have my uh, one of my best friends, Chris. Uh, he's at the booth right there. He's got the afro. He's my dude over there. Um, he's been my friend since, like, middle school. And so, fucking, I'm lucky to have him on board, and he's just been a big key fucking player. I got Charlie Bear, um, and then I got my partner, Lou Dog, with the dreadlocks. Uh, he, draw, he, he runs uh, the Turkey Van Winkle 805, which is our delivery, our distribution, and our manufacturing site. It's a, it's a micro license. So we manufacture hash, we distro, and we have a retail delivery sales there too. And I know you know about deliveries, so. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, we're full, we're lucky to be fully, uh, full vertical and just full licensed and we, we control and operate and grow and uh, breed and select all of our own stuff. You know, we're full in-house. So. Let's say, are you lead the selection process? Because I have a feeling now that I'm like getting to know you, you must have like a really good, either really good or really picky fucking, um, you know, selection process. That's a big deal in breeding and stuff, man. And the art of winning is in selection. You know, being the most awarded sun-grown cannabis competitor in the world, the most awarded hash company in the world, you have to have a gnarly selection. Your nose, your palate has to be tremendous. And then when you're doing breeding, you have to do large scale pop population hunts and, and, and real be scrutinous with what you're doing and look for the elites, look for the sports. You know what Thank I mean? You. Because, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's easy to go get a pack of seeds or have a plant with a name on it. And a name doesn't mean anything unless it comes from the person or you're the person himself. I can put a name on any plant and give it to you. But unless you're the guy or I got it from the guy or you know, you're the dude, it doesn't really matter nowadays. And the game is kind of so muddied up, the breeder is the most important part of the whole equation before it goes to the grower, which is really, I would say one, but breeder is really right there with them. The breeder and the grower really are the most important parts. Now, everything else in the whole industry is reliant on what this dude's selection is. <laughs> his selection on the plant that then being mass produced like Melanade or OZ Kush or Peach Rings or ZOZ or Z Cube, you know? And people can put many different names to these varieties like, you know, Runtz or Zushi or whatever. They won't tell you that it come from a pack of our seeds. They'll put their name on it, their gist on it. Oh, she comes from you? No, I'm just saying that these people buy my seeds and they can call it whatever the hell they want. <laughs> they can do whatever they want. And that's where the game is weird. So unless you're the guy, you got it from the guy, then it doesn't really matter, right? You know, so a lot of the genetics out there are renamed work of somebody. Somebody's doing the work and making the seed. 
somebody, the clone came from a seed. That's you. I do that work, you know what I mean? And so, you know. So if I may, Brandon, as yeah. a breeder, what do you think sets you apart, you know what I'm saying? The art, the selection, my nose, my palate, my Can't vision. Can you describe your style? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to get a notion for, your palate. Like I'm, Savage Farms, I'm, everything's really loud from I'm Jerry. I'm fruity. I'm, I'm terpy, you it's know? Strong for you. Yeah, I'm strong. I'm, you know, I smoke a lot of rosin and, and everything terpy. too, so like I get high, but I want something that's undeniably and unexplainably different than other things, you know what I mean? Like, so if you're, if you have like uh, some Blue Dream, Blue Dream is undeniably and unexplainably different. No wonder different you got a problem, dude. Than everything else. It's not good enough. Yeah, so if you, if you have, if you have Green Crack, it's undeniably and unexplainably different than anything else. These are Holy Grail varieties. And in order to create a variety or know when to select and pull out a plant and go, this is special. This is going to the world right here. That is a skill, that's an art. That's creating a Holy Grail variety, not an esque, 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 meaning this is like this, this is like that. These are already things that have already been done. We're looking for new renditions, new twists, things that are different and undeniably and unexplainably different. Like you don't know why it's different, but it is totally different. What I like about that joint, man, it's really terpy, nice flavor, it's strong too. Good on the chest, you know, like mellow. I like that. Another factor, and that goes into something else, is smokeability. You know, a lot of people don't know what that means, but that means, like, how does it feel on your palate? When you're talking about look, smell, taste, and high, those are the four legs to make the pony run. When you're talking about uh, another portion of that that never gets spoken about is the smokeability. How does it smoke? Is it harsh on the tongue? Does it taste like a sack of nickels? You know what I mean? How is it hitting the chest? How does it exhale? How does it make you feel after? You know what I mean? The intention of how something was grown from someone. You know? Are they organic? Was their heart into it? Where's their vibe? You know what I mean? Do they really love what they do? And I think, you know, what I'm really enjoying is I'm talking to the, the brand, you know what I'm saying? This is you, you know, it's just a real conversation. And, you know, third gen family farms, man, like, what, where, where do you guys stand in 2023 in today's fucking wild market? Yeah, I know, I know uh, Brandon has a persona, you know? That's what Online, I mean. Online, yeah. Trike Tyson comes out. You know what I mean? Turfy Balboa. Trichel Jordan, you know what I mean? But yeah, right now we're talking to Brandon, big dog. You know what I mean? We're yeah, vibing. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's dope, it's dope, man. I feel like... The, the market is going good right now, I yeah, yeah. say. I would say um, prices haven't really changed for me. Um, I know a lot of other people, things are changing for them, but I think that it's the disassociation with the market itself that is making these individuals that are being taken advantage of, these farmers being taken advantage of, okay? Because I think it's a disassociation with, with them and the market itself. I think that there's people taking advantage of people and they're quick to tell them how shitty they are, but then quick to run down the block and tell them how great they are. You know what I mean? With this person's product. And there needs to be more finish line work, not just so much uh, couch work, these farmers need to do more work. They need to get out and push themselves more individually. Don't and be you a part hard? of what? Because we've been behind the green closet. Like, it's hard to come out of the green closet. I know, because I'm the one. I'm talking to the city councils. I'm going to the Board of Supervisors meetings in Mendocino County and stuff, too. And it's hard to get, um, you know, to feel like you have a voice, which you do. A lot of people don't show up to these meetings. So if you just give them your, your two cents and you just be honest and be from the heart, then it's not hard, it's, it's easy to be involved. You know what I mean? I think that we, as a farmer, we're the, one of the strongest aspects of the whole thing. We're the base of the pyramid that holds everything else up, you see? And so, right now, the farmers have been taken advantage of. I feel like a lot of my buddies have either shut down, old timers have had to sh close up shop, um, and they've been aged out of the situation, literally aged out of the grossing because 
uh, of trying to keep up with the cost burden of, of being in the system because trying to stay up with the legislative shit in their county or trying to stay up on the fees and the permits and the business of packaging, selling, and, and, and procuring a product that fucking is worthwhile in a certain time. So right now is what we've seen in 2017 when they, when they made this law right. We knew that we had the last like five years. It was like three to five years, I said. I remember I was talking to Tim Blake and we said that they were gonna push us out. And whoever can last this shit through is gonna be the winners because when we pop out the other side, it's gonna be glorious day. You know what I mean? Golden goose eggs. Yeah, golden goose eggs, dog, that everybody's gonna be over here like, yeah, not everyone, you know what I mean? But those that eat shit sandwiches long enough to get to there, you know what I mean? So. Well, I was gonna say, it is a responsibility to foresee the legacy of Mendocino cannabis. It really is. I was thinking about it today, man, that I think we're probably one of the longest continuously run hash brands there is. You know what I mean? We've been winning awards. Your family. Yeah, I mean, we we started with Boo Boo's Bubble in 2012. We won the Emerald, yeah, Boo Boo's Bubble. And then we phased it to Moonshine Melt. And we still have the Boo Boo's brand. Moonshine, yeah. yeah. And so, um, which... You know, it's it's been a wild ride, but you know, I think that we have been continuously running and operating and manufacturing solventless hash probably longer than anybody in the state, at least. You know what I mean? So, so that's what I'm saying. Like, what, what's your position for tw the 23 market this season? Uh, can you talk about some of your breeding work? Maybe we can start there. Yeah, you know, um, to be honest, uh, the breeding is is ever changing. You know, and. We're trying to not let it get muddy, you know, with the California gelato land race, you know, everything kind of turns to esque, you know what I mean? And to, to keep things that are like true breeding that are different than other varieties, I think that's what it is. So we're digging deep in the vault this year to pull out things for the spring crosses right now. Um, so that way we have cool new stuff to play with because flat out, you know, we have a lot of cool stuff but we've already, I felt like, presented it out, so I'm looking for new stuff in my vault right now. Yeah. Shit, are you yeah. going back in time? I'm going back in time with some of the work I've already done that I didn't get to touch on quite as deep as I'd like to, and then I'm also um, looking outside, too, and, and, and um, doing some outcrosses and doing some stuff with other people's work and seeing what, what else there is out there. You know, I've, I've done that a couple times, and I'm open, like, I breed with other friends' work, too, and stuff, and I use it, but, um, there's a lot of times that this doesn't tickle my fancy, you know, so I'm just trying to fucking find cool, cool shit that, you know, is... What advice do you have, uh, excuse me, what advice do you have to the youngsters that are coming up and, like, want to be good readers, you know? Um, I was telling some, some young bucks over here today, it's their first show, you know, um, Sunset uh, Compacino 415, boys out of San Francisco, shout out, you know, these dudes, um... These dudes are throwing it down, man. He does tissue cultures. They're like 20 years old, 22 years old kids over there. And so I constantly, I bought their seeds today. I buy their product. I support the young bucks. Um, you know, I'll grow it out and give them a shout out too and, you know, all that stuff. But it's because, like, you know, somebody did that to me too. So I constantly, I give, them, that. Yeah. So I constantly give them a pat on the back because... You know, um, the DNA genetics, Don and Aaron, the late sub cool, you know, these guys would come by my booth too, you know what I mean? And, and I would go by their seeds and stuff too. And so I'm constantly, you know, remembering shit like that. There was a, a man named Lawrence Ringo that always rings a bell. Um, and, uh, you know, I always had a booth across from this guy. And he's like Jimi Hendrix in the prime. And he was just ahead of his time, you know what I mean? He was in the CBD game before anybody. He held a party in the hills called the Leo Party every year in Humboldt County and invite everybody out and have a good time. Where do you think we get these ideas? Have a party, to have a good time, to be forefront leaders. I'd always, my booth would be popping and I'd always make it a point to go over to his booth and get some gear from him or give him a high five and say what's up and talk to him, you know, because 
Nobody cared about CBD. Nobody was over at his booth. He was like creating medicine for people when no one was creating medicine. It was really cool, man. And I think his kids are running the business now and shit like that, but it's really cool. I always think about him and, you know, other people in my past that I've always come across. You know, that dude, I don't think he ever got to win an Emerald Cup, but he'd come every single year competing, swinging for the fences. You know what I mean? And uh, he gave it his heart, and he really created winning stuff. They just didn't have a category for him yet. You know what I mean? So... Uh, Brandon, you know, <clears throat> thank you for sharing that, man. How did you grow up here in Mendo? Like, were you touching the planet at an early age? Uh... My mom was one of the first medical patients here. And so, like, yeah, I was, I touched the planet at an early age. Uh, my mom taught me to call them turtles so that I wouldn't go to school and say I was watering the plants. You know, I was uh, watering the turtles. You know what I mean? And so, <laughs> you know, for instance, yeah. So I, I grew up, my mom had, like, uh, plant counts after 97 or whatever. She had this little little card issued by the sheriff's department so she could grow her little plants in the backyard and shit like that. So, you know, we've been, I've been cultured in the scene early on. I grew up, her friends were uh, Jack Hare and Eddie Lepp. That's how I got to get introduced to those guys uh, and, and grow with them on the big historical year where it was the largest cannabis. Did you with them? Yeah, I, I, was I was 18 years old. Yeah. And so we were there, no they shit. were chopped it down and helped protest on the fucking highway with them. And yeah, we were at a garden right down the street at Med Mike's Garden too, which was like a, a conjoining garden. We had like signage that was like Eddie's Medicinal or uh, uh, Patience Alliance, which was Med Mike, Patience Alliance and uh, Eddie's Medicinal Gardens, which was like a collab. So let me ask you this, bro. Like like that that joint is medicine you know what i'm saying it's strong it's good it is medicine man and people forget about talking about medicine it's so i was going to ask you man for, what's going to be your legacy as far as you know being a medicine man i want to be like someone to help other people you know what i mean an inspiration for people to you know chase you know what i mean somebody to look you know look at and go man well if he can do it i can do it you know what i mean um I want to be a family farm that's just not going to sell out and have, you know, growth like Jack Daniels, the brand, you know, it's black and white, but, you know, when you see those people in the commercial, they're actually people that work in the plant. Those are not actors. These are real people. I want to create a, a story legacy. The legacy takes time to create a story that's fucking just cemented, whether it's the awards or whatever, it's the seeds or the hash they've heard of. I want to create a facet that touches someone and I want to help people like other farmers and shit like that. We're doing this thing uh, this year. It's like right now I'm here talking to people about uh, something called the Turk Templar. You know what I mean? And I don't know if you want to talk about it. Yeah, before, please, yeah. Turk Templar is like, uh, like a round table, the Templar, you know what I mean? Or the Turk Templar. And uh, everyone's invited, you know what I mean? All, all of us uh, small farmers, all of us uh, legacy cultivators, everyone that's not like corporate and, um, you know, super, you know, um, on that side, right, deserves a seat at the table. And we're going to come and we don't know what that is yet because we haven't created it. And we're going to get everybody together and uh, I'm telling everybody about it. And, create a platform so that way we can have a voice and go okay well we have strength in numbers now we can come together for testing uh, certain aspects of the cannabis scene agree on certain things have a have a have a, uh, have a power create like uh, a panel of like 15 people this is the first mission Just create like a panel of about 15 people 13 people that's very honest very uh, trusting panel that's that's unbiased that's gonna be true for this cause, because this is the biggest part. It's these 13 people, 15 people, whatever, right? We're gonna create a, an auction house and a platform for gauging and judging cannabis. And Turk Templar is gonna be a stamp on the bag, something that we can all get behind and push something to educate the consumer on who we are, on who to support, why, and instead of going after people and say, this is not who to support, 
this is bad people, this is da da da. We're gonna be the positive approach and go, this is who to support and why. And if they don't have this stamp on the bag, are they ethically farmed? Are they treating their labor right? Is the labor paid right? You know what I mean? Is, uh, is, is everything taken care of honestly and, and, and respectful, you know, and for, for, for Mother Nature and for everything, right? So um, we're gonna create a platform that's gonna gauge cannabis and judge it and go, okay, well, this pound is beautiful. This is a $1,500 pound. This pound is beautiful. This is a $3,000 pound. You know what I mean? And overnight, we're gonna stabilize the cannabis industry and, and basically make a fucking platform so that we, we all have somewhere to, uh, in, a, in a gauging and a, a judging process for it. If it doesn't have the stamp, it might be corporate. It might be some big old corporate thing. Like everybody's got a corporate structure, but it might be like super, you know, blown out. Are these dudes doing acres and they're disrespecting uh, the price structure of what everything's at? Are they coming together? Because you can eat, everybody can eat. But when one person comes in and starts dropping the ball on another thing and another thing, you start taking food off other people's plates and it becomes unethical for like farms to compete on that kind of a scale, you know, on that level, you know what I mean? So we need to basically uh, come together, create a round table. We can come together and, and create this, this group that's gonna gauge the cannabis and go through these are pounds are gonna be done. Now you can sell it for more. Sell your pounds for more than that. But just you can't drop below the price that the Terp Templar gauges your pounds to be at. Right. You know what That's I mean? Dope. That's, dope. That's cool. And you don't have to sell it at the auction house. If you want to sell it somewhere else and you have a distro or you go right, to the go right ahead. But you can't undermine the price of the Templar. And then that shows right there. It's like a, um, it's like another thing that we can add to ourselves to basically, you know, be able to show the people like, hey, there's nothing to show who to support. When they go there, there's corporate, there's craft, and then there's like uh, uh, um, corporate craft, which is mids, disguised as craft, right, okay? Right. And so it, they're blurring the line between corporate and craft with the packaging, their marketing. If the people knew that poor Phil was over here and, and he needed help, and 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 or, or he's he's just trying to get his pounds off for this amount and he had that symbol on there i think that it'd be easy to tell the people hey this is the story this is who to support and why they want to support the small farmer there's no way to connect the dots between there and the the person behind the counter at the dispensaries are left with the burden of educating these everybody that comes through the door and they just can't they don't it's, it's left falling short and falling on deaf ears. You know, you ask him about the concentrate counter, oh, it's over there in the corner, back behind there in the dark. You yeah, know? No, You're like, wait a minute, where's, what do you mean? There's no solventless, you don't, you know, where's your solventless, where's your rosin, where's your hash? You know, like, eh. they don't want to talk to you about it. They don't got time, next, who's next, next? You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, no, no, excuse me, Brandon, we're just a little short on time. You yeah. Know, Cause I think we're reaching about 30 minutes. Yes, sir. Um, but I wanted to ask you, you know, the war on drugs for me has separated my family, you know what I'm saying? And I think for a lot of us, it's been like an issue, you know, generally speaking. And I think, in your case, do you feel like cannabis has strengthened your family? Yeah, but I mean, I think the war on drugs affects everybody, right? If you're, if you're in and around this business especially. Can we talk yeah. just for like just uh, maybe two, three minutes, please? Yeah. Uh, like your experience growing up in the war on drugs, how that affected you? If at all? Yeah, I mean, they throw dirt in your generator and hot sauce on your bed and oatmeal and put the sheet back over it and shoot your water tanks and, you know, terrorize your shit. Cut your mattresses up. Uh, you don't want to go talk at any meetings. You don't want to talk to camera. You don't want to talk to no one. You don't, you know, it's, it's been a wild ride, you know. You just got to take it when it happens, yeah. Yeah, man, right? It's, it's heavy duty. How did it make you feel? I mean, it made you more angry? Like, uh, like I mean, were you, were you more driven? Uh, did, did it put, put stress on your family? Yeah, it put stress on the family. I mean, I think I probably got PTSD from it, you know, for sure. Um, but, you know, it, it's just part of the game, dude. I think that they should respect us more for it. Because we had, it's a different time. It's a different time we kind of moved in. We moved and Ubered in. The gardens were bigger in 04 and 05 and 06. 
It was seven, it was eight, and I said that everything kind of buckled down and then it blew back again when legalization was approaching in like 17, dude. It was like. Well, at the end of the day, I think you've done a good job of like branding yourself or marketing yourself, for lack of a better word. You're just being you, you know, you're really yeah, passionate. Yeah. So at the end of the day, coming from a time when we used to have to hide and shit, like, how do you feel being able to like be appreciated for who you are? You know what I'm saying? Um, Can I say something real quick? Yeah. I have a homie in South Africa. He's a legacy operator. And he says, man, whether you love me or hate me, you know, you're thinking good things about me. Thinking or, about I'm me. in your head, yeah. Well, I'm in your head, yeah. He said, he said, I win. I win. I, think, I say that G. all the time. He's a G, actually. I say that all the time. It's the same thing that your buddy in South Africa says. I say it all the time. And I say it like this. Whether you love me or hate me, you're thinking about me. And that's what it is. There's no such thing as good marketing or bad marketing. There's marketing. You know what I mean? And so, you know... Is publicity or bad publicity is what the real saying is or whatever, but you know, good publicity, bad publicity, whether you love me or hate me or indifferent, when I walk away, like I told you earlier, there's no wondering what I'm thinking or whatever because I'd already done told you. I say what's on my mind. I wear my heart and my emotion on my sleeve. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, your buddy's right. You know, and it's that's a good way to put yourself into the world too and portray yourself, right? Like yourself out there now if we have differences or somebody says something that, then we can always talk about it you know what I mean we can always go hey you know what I mean that's the thing with being boisterous and opinionated you know what I mean right sometimes you're gonna say things that other people aren't gonna agree with or you may feel a certain way that the other person doesn't feel you know or I got and, one last question for you excuse me Brandon by the way, that's all my deadly seeds in South Africa. Jay, man, he's a G, bro. You Hell know what I'm yeah! Hell yeah! Uh, and then, so I just want your perspective, please, in a couple in like a couple minutes on the global culture, the global game. How do you feel about that? Are you seeing that? Are you touching that? Yeah, that's all my mind's on. It's all I'm thinking about. The big play is federal legalization, the and world, inter and international distribution. Okay. You got your mind on it. Yeah. Don Perignon. Is it made in California? Don P's made in France, bro. And you can't call it champagne if it ain't from there. So you're dreaming of having your shit grown like overseas? No, I'm here keeping it here in Mendocino and the Emerald Triangle, and it's gonna go everywhere in the world because that's what the export people it, want. Export it. The yeah. people want my story. The people want to know they got it from a real hill dude. That's the most decorated or the whatever. This is where Z came from. This is the spot. You know what I mean? Like that's they want that across the world. And not many people have a worldwide or international recognized brand or ability to do that. That's where the play is at. And that's what I know is the big play. Like my buddy Luke that owns Connected Cannabis Co. and part of Alien Labs, right? He told me that the real play is when federal legalization comes. That's the real play. We're not waiting. And he's one of the biggest cannabis businesses in the world. This dude's created the original cannabis licensing, you know what I mean, deals. <laughs> well, he wrote the first ones. He's, he's been in the game. It, like, I listen to my, my buddies that are successful and other peers and players in the game, too. Not just my thoughts, you know what I right, mean? Right. This is... Nasty Brand, excuse me, how can we get a hold of you online, you know, on IG and website? Yeah, so uh, you can get a hold of us, one 844 BW. Uh, we have a website, TVW, Terpy Van Winkle, TVW805.com. Um, we're uh, third, uh, third Gen Family Farms on Instagram. You can Google us, Third Gen Family Farms. Um, we're also on Weed Maps at Terpy Van Winkle. <laughs> Statewide California distribution, largest seed, dying breed seed selection in the world. Um, I would boast that our metric seed catalog is in like 485 different varieties right now crossbred, all in-house, um, all the Z hybrids, Skittle hybrids, home of moonshine melts, so all that stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Give me Thank squeeze, you, my man. brother. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, Daniel. You're the man, brother.